At last, bull and horse had been beaten, and Kutaro's pride restored. But pride comes before a fall, they say. Expect plenty of dark twists and evil schemes as we stride into what I like to call Act Five. Let us continue our adventure. A short time ago, in a galaxy far from far away, with the power of Calibris and the might of the four champions, Kutaro had won victory after victory against the vicious Moonbear King. More than half the moon had been freed, and the noose was tightening around the tyrant as his moonstone shards were taken and his advantage slipped away. Kutaro's deeds of daring do had become a beacon of hope, and the beleaguered peoples of the moon were on the brink of rebellion. The flimsy soul of a selfish boy had become the adamantine soul of a hero. Kutaro, may the forceps, <clears throat> I mean scissors, be with you. Kutaro and Picarina were winding their way back to the wild waste when they got lost in a dense forest. And as dark clouds settled in overhead, our duo found themselves longing more and more for the light of the sun. We're not in Kansas anymore. Ah! Hey, maybe we should, like, turn back. Yeah, I mean, getting lost would be a total bummer. Okay, back to the entrance. But alas, neither one of them had the foggiest idea from whence they came. Supposed to chicken out. You're the hero of the moon, the big cheese. You took that bull by the horns and won, right, champ? Surely Kutaro was strong enough to wrangle a couple of trees. Look, you've got a moon to save and a sun princess to please. So man up, kiddo! As if he had a choice. The only road was forward, or whatever direction they were facing, so our hero steeled himself and pressed on. The pale blue light of the earth, his only guide. The Headless Horseman had driven Kutaro and Picarina right into the labyrinthine clutches of the Snacker Boss. What's this face doing in our face? That's one chubby pumpkin. Looks like a bomb ought to light it up. And then there was... Ah! What's it doing? Um, our light just rolled off. Hurry! Even the candles are pumpkins. Want me to light a candle? I think he's got the jitters too. Another one? And it's pitch black again? There must be a light. Aimlessly, 
Kuturo and Picarina continued their trek through the dense and licorice black sugar shadows of the snacker boss. with crows, but ghosts scare me out of my britches. Uh, that's nice. But if you really want to thank us, tell us where the heck we are. Pardon? Oh, well, you're all uh, on the outskirts of Halloweenville. Cozy place till the Moon Bear King's generals come along and did stuff to the local pumpkins. Did stuff? That's right. They made it so snacks sprout all over them. That explains the candy and cookie trees. Oh, I hope you didn't all eat them, because the townsfolk that did all turned into hope of monsters. Just desserts, you might say. <laughs> what was that? Wolves? Ha! <laughs> to our dogs, General Dog. He's all that stops us from running for the hills. <laughs> Kataro, let's whip that puppy and take his moonstone shard. through the snacker bosk's shadowy branches. Uh, uh, don't worry, Katara. I've got your back. Woo ah! Our hero blazed on like a flaming pumpkin in the darkness. No chasm could crash him as he coursed past the dire monsters. He was going to get through this forest and put an end to General Dog.
sure that I can't eat this. So not fair. Closer and closer. was a giant, no, the giantest of pumpkins. This pumpkin made the puny gourds that grew from it look like bumpkins. Oh! What's sealed inside this one? To keep the snacker boss dark, someone rounded up most of its yes! time. Oh, finally this place will lighten up. Just outside the bosque, General Dog stood watch like some great Stygian hound. You are Firewood. So this is General Dog. Huh? Wait a second. He's on a leash. Whoa. Huh? What leash? You know, maybe we should just ignore him. Yeah, let's go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, don't go. Do you mind? We're in a hurry. Whoa. All I want is for that nasty moon bear king whoa, whoa. to scratch my ears. Ugh, scratch this! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Are we playing? Oh my gosh! Come on, Kataro. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Please, just for a minute. No way! Whoa, whoa. Look at me. You know, I think I'm a cat person. Whoa. I am big and strong. Whoa. If you beat me, you can have my moonstone piece. <laughs> We'd get that anyway. I know you love me. Ugh, let me count the ways. Whoa, whoa. Oh boy, she does. Could this quite possibly be the dumbest animal I've ever seen? What do you say, Katara? Should we throw him a bone? Whoa, whoa. I love bones. I think it's safe to say his brain's his weak point. Give him a thwomp. Woo, woo, woo. Come on, block! Woo, woo, woo.
phone down. There, he's distracted. Slam him! Go! Go! Now, Kotaro, tie that left brains into knots. You shall not pass. No, not there. Let's go for a walk. Attaboy, slugger. See, that was just the tip of the Kataro iceberg. Hey, a moonstone shard. How many we up to now? I can't keep count. The house was a sugary sucker punch to the appetite. Their eyes started at the fluffy whipped cream snow on the milk chocolate shingles and wandered longingly down crispy, crunchy cookie walls until they found the sticky temptation of the candy windows. Their minds were still toying with thoughts of macaroon molding and Baumkuchen banisters when their eyes wisely decided to shut up and let them smell the darn thing. Oh my gosh, yummy! Do you do you think they would mind if we took a bite? We haven't eaten in like minutes. No, no, no! Must not eat delicious house. We need to get the moonstone. <laughs> I have you. What's that? Gazaro, your belt is spewing gas. Oh, flawless victory! <laughs> <laughs> it was a trap. Our champ had stopped to chomp just long enough for the chimp to make a chomp on him. 